anyway, uh, it's an incredible thing because 60 years ago, the female pill was introduced. Um, 16 volunteers will test out the birth control treatment. This is a group of British men become the first in the world to test this new male contraceptive pill that scientists could believe could transform how the sexes share responsibility for birth control. The drug, it's got a real catchy name, it's called YCT529, is initially being given to these volunteers at a clinic in Nottingham. Um, it works by shutting off a protein called retinoic acid receptor alpha, ra alpha, ra alpha, uh, inside the body. This prevents ra alpha from binding to a form of vitamin A, and in turn, this should stop the formation of sperm in the testes. So that's why, so it's non-hormonal. The biggest problem with the last one was that it was hormonal. Well, believe it or not, uh, we have here the developer the actual developer of the uh, male contraceptive pill, and it's Dr. Uh, Gunda Georg. A very good afternoon to you. All right. Um, uh, good, af good morning to you. Oh, good morning <laughs> for you, exactly. <laughs> Professor of Medicinal Chemistry at the Uni of uh, Minnesota. This is quite a leap forward from the old hormonal approach to the male contraceptive pill, isn't it? Yes, it sure is. And I tell you, I've been working on it uh, for uh, almost you know, exactly 20 years. And so it's very, very rewarding to see that, that one of the approaches that we have been taken is actually getting to the stage where there is uh, going, where there is a clinical trial now. So it's just amazing. And I was actually present in Nottingham when the first man took the dose. So it was a very emotional event for me, moment for me as well as um, the company, uh, <clears throat> uh, I guess, representatives who, uh, you know, took it to this particular point. Because in an academic setting, you can do only so much, and then it becomes very, very expensive to do all the preclinical testing to make sure a drug is safe. And so that's where the company took over, and they have done actually. Um, this part um, of the development in in record time so it's um yeah is, is it's, that it's why a great it's moment in, is that why it's being tested on british men no other reason <clears throat> uh so um um i guess uh, the company has actually um uh, applied uh, to carry out uh, clinical trials in several different countries and it was the uk and new zealand that approved it first and so that's why um, I guess um, it's done in Britain. And of course, there is also this company or this clinic, uh, Quotient, and uh, the company had prior good experience with them. And so that all came together, Great Britain, the company that they had worked with before. And uh, so that's why, why I guess it, it was done uh, first in Britain. It's, it's quite a small group, isn't it? 16. Correct. That, yeah. that's that's quite a small sample group to to go with why is it why have you started or why have they started with such a uh, such a small group is there, are there any yeah. concerns around it um you know anytime um you know you give a drug to the first person there's always the concern that there could be something happening that was not anticipated from the safety studies in animals. We have pretty good evidence that this is a safe drug because we have tested it already in non-human primates. And that's as close as you can mm. get. Many drugs are going to clinical trial without going through the non-human primates. But that's why we feel really confident about the drug in terms of efficacy. Uh, the uh, sperm counts were lowered in the in the monkeys and then when the drug was withdrawn the sperm counts came back so we don't anticipate this but you never know what's going to happen when you know the first person takes it and that's why also the first people who get it in, in most clinical trials is a very very low dose okay it's not an right. effic efficacious dose but it's just to say we give a small dose we make sure that nothing happening and then your dose escalate okay so that's what's happening right now. This, I started off this program nearly three hours ago saying that, that this is an area of, of medicine, if you like, of, of science, yeah, that, yeah. that it seems like large pharmaceutical companies have not been that keen to invest in, right? Because yes. uh, we know mm -hmm. that they only invest when there is a huge market that they can profit from. 
it is one of the, 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 the fears here that, 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 you know, men and their masculinity uh, is very, uh, very attached to, oh, look what I can produce and I've got a high sperm count. And that, that it's all tied in uh, with the masculine. Not, women, women don't go, oh, I've got thousands of eggs. I'm all right. Do you know what I mean? There's a very different way of thinking about fertility and masculinity uh, is linked very much to, to that. Um, the, the, there is a belief that not men, not, not millions of men will want to take this because it might interfere with their masculinity. Well, maybe um, in some cultures that may be the case, but uh, recent market research uh, seems to suggest that there is actually quite a bit of acceptance uh, for a male contraceptive uh, pill worldwide. And uh, surprisingly, in countries like Bangladesh or even in Africa, acceptance is relatively high. And um, so I'm, I'm very... I guess I'm very positive that there's going to be a very large market. So I would say eventually the larger pharmaceutical companies um, will come in and will probably take this forward because this small company uh, doesn't have the ability right. to um, distribute this yeah. worldwide. Yeah. yeah. Is there a concern with you as, I mean, I mean, I can't even imagine how brilliant your brain must be to even think uh, that far outside of a box to come up with this idea. I mean, it's extraordinary. But, but is there a concern with you as the, the producer of this, de the developer of this, the science behind this, that, that this could lead to... Um, uh, you know, unwanted sexually transmitted diseases because at the moment, uh, you know, most men, I would say, are only persuaded to to wear a condom on the basis that it might prevent them from becoming fathers. If they haven't got that issue, then of course there is the issue of sexually transmitted diseases because a lot of people go, I'm not going to do both. Yeah, no, I, this, this drug is not going to prevent uh, sexually transmitted diseases. Mm. So these types of precautions have still to be taken. But think about it, you know, there are, of course, many people who are in committed relationships. And for them, True. I think it yeah. would make a lot of sense. And also, you know, you, you, you said, oh, I don't trust my husband or my, my boyfriend to do this. You know, so I guess, first of all, you can see whether he took the pill, right? It's going to be right there in your bathroom or wherever. So you can check it if you need to. Uh, the other thing is, um, you know, you can actually test uh, whether a man is infertile and I don't know whether you know about this but there are these test kits they're just like the COVID test kits and so seminal fluid is being put in and if this second uh, line is appearing then it means the man is fertile if there's no second line just like, like in COVID if it's not uh, appearing then we know um, it, you know the sperm levels are below um, what's needed for uh, fertilization that's a hell of a passion killer <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a yeah, minute, yeah. I just want to do a sign. <laughs> just hold your horses there, buddy. I, <laughs> I just want to do a, a, a test on you. Um, <laughs> how did you, uh, just as a point of interest, how did you think of this uh, as a means of being um, uh, something that would be a contraceptive? You know, 20 years ago, uh, the uh, National Institute of health here in the United States issued this request for application, meaning they were promoting the idea of non-hormonal contraception and to do drug discovery like I have been doing. And I saw this and I thought this is a really, I guess, wonderful idea because I think there is a need. And I tell you, whenever I talk to women about this, they tell me it's about time. Yeah. Okay. So, and I thought it's about time and I wanted to get into it and I didn't maybe quite realize that it would take so many years, but I've been at it, you know, the last 20 years and I'm having other projects that I'm taking forward. I'm very dedicated. I'm one of the few people dedicated Absolutely. Uh, to, to this field. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that, that's what I was going to say. I, I just wondered if it was because the, the pharmaceutical companies were concerned. But I have to it's tell that. you, when I, when I do a, a phone in uh, on, on pe being a parent or whatever, a lot of men will call and say, I, I was tricked into being a parent. I, I, you know, and I think a lot of men will take it because yes. they don't, they, they can then be in control of their own 
parenting the same way women were in the 60s and I think that is an incredibly important step I'm the mother of a son so I'm I'd be like yep it's take the pill <laughs> I'm not ready to be a grandma yet <laughs> you are brilliant I uh, honestly I, I bow down to your uh, scientific mind mine I don't have a scientific bone in my body but I appreciate that uh, let me say it's also teamwork okay yeah. so it's i mean um i guess i'm the maybe if you want to say this a team leader but i have many people work with me of right course. uh who designs and decides you know these types of compounds there was deborah wolgam was at columbia university she's a reproductive biologist she's my collaborator i have many other collaborators you know so it's like everything in drug discovery it's teamwork yeah. you need experts uh, of the various uh i guess uh, disciplines uh, that that are coming in together when you do it, uh, the drug discovery process. Yeah, well, I, I'm very busy. This program I do all myself. I've got no team, no support. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. There's hundreds of them in there. They're all they're all there. Um, I, I'm I'm like I said. I, I bow down to your brilliance and your team's brilliance. It's extraordinary that people out there like you who are moving science forward in this way. And thank you very much. Okay. And it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much.